Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at another knife by Sam Ramu. This is the 9225. I believe it comes in four different colors. Uh, G10, you either get blue, uh, yellow, or orange, or you can get the carbon fiber laminate that's on top of G10. It's got an axis lock. Uh, Sam Ramu calls it an ambi lock. Uh, but D2 blade, it's got a sort of funky modern kind of styling to it, you know, with holes, two holes in the blade, uh, four holes in the handle here. It's kind of, you know, blocky kind of, I don't know, to me it almost looks kind of 80s um, sci-fi kind of look to it, whatever that means. So if you're interested in this knife, with my discount code at White Mountain Knives, it's under 50 American dollars. Uh, you get 10% off with my coupon code CCE from anything at White Mountain Knives. If what you're buying doesn't qualify for the 10% off, finish the purchase anyways. And when it's done, email White Mountain Knives and let them know that uh, you wanted to use a coupon code from Canadian Cutting Edge and you'll get your 10% rebate. Some manufacturers like... Um, Benchmade, they don't allow sellers to sell things at a discount. So he doesn't sell it at his discount. He gives you a rebate. <laughs> so let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this thing. So here it is. I think it's a pretty good looking knife. Yes, that's a bead blast finish they put on there. And... Uh, We've got a pocket clip that's right side only. It's been anodized, stainless steel that's anodized. It is a deep clip, but it's, you know, you've got about a centimeter, a little less than half of an inch of the knife sticking out of your pocket. It's got the same kind of stylized holes repeated on the clip that are on the body and on the blade. Other than that, you know, it's just G10. There's a piece of metal that goes around this area and follows the blue back to here that holds it together. And uh, behind this black section, it's just G10. So there is a steel structure to this. Full back spacer. The lanyard hole is G10, and it's just, uh, you know, narrow, which I like. Big enough to put any kind of paracord through there. At the end of the handle, this is how I like lanyard holes done. This is really well done. For people who don't want lanyard holes, it's, you know, not a problem right there, but the people that want them, when you're holding the knife, you know, the paracord can be back here instead of pushing into the palm of your hand, which, well done. And it doesn't bulk out this way either, so just great. Got a little bit of chamfering right here, like significant chamfering, but there's minor chamfering all the way around the whole thing. So there's no hot spots when you're gripping the knife, doing some extended hard work for a little while. The only thing is, if you're using your left hand, it can get a little hot, the tip of the pocket clip right here, depending on where your fingers are placed, the tips of them can get a little hot. In the right hand, I didn't find any problem with the pocket clip at all. It just didn't get hot in the hand. D2 steel, we've got uh, this axis lock. Like I said, they call it an ambi lock. Lockup is very good. There's uh, the uh, lock bar goes up far enough that it's very solid. I did a spine whack test holding the knife like this and whacking the back of it with a piece of hardwood. And uh, yeah, it's a good solid lockup, just like San Ramu has been doing for quite a while. We've got um, a straight back blade. There's a little bit of jimping up here. So you do get a little jimping for your thumb rest. Not enough, really. But that jimping is mostly for the front flipper effect. So right there. Works really well to do it, you know, sideways, bringing your thumb across. It's hard to do the way I'm holding my arm here while under the camera, but there you go. It works okay. It, it's not a reach over kind of flipper tab. You just, I can't get it with the reach over. It's just too far to go. We've got D2 written on the blade right there on the Ricasso, and then the date of manufacture is next right there. The Triangle San Ramu logo, model number, serial number. 
So that's a lot of writing. Thankfully, it's not too big and too dark. I don't like writing on the main bevel of the blade, but, you know, a lot of companies do it. At least it's not huge and not, you know, super dark and in your face. On the other side, you get the San Remu logo again, but now it's the letters SRM. Stay ready for more. And then you've got San Remu here as well. A little much. Uh, you don't need it three times on a knife. San Remu, you, I know you want your branding to get out there, and I know you want people to recognize what is yours, but you don't need to put it three times on a knife. Once is enough. And right here is the once that I like. The SRM on the pivot pin right there. I'm not going to take this knife fully apart in this video. I just don't like putting access lock knives back together. I can do it. I've never had one that I just couldn't put back together. But they get trickier the more complicated they are. And with these ones, having the steel liners just being a thin spine here, yeah, it can be a tough time taking it apart. If you haven't seen what a access lock knife looks like taken apart, I'll try to remember to put a link to one of my other knives when I've taken it apart so you can see what an access lock looks like. I'm jumping back and forth, aren't I? The blade. Uh, like I said, straight spine. It's got this nice little dip here. Makes me think of Ostep Hell's knives. He likes to put a little uh, divot in the spine of the blade right where your thumb rests. We've got uh, a, the nice chamfer, a decent bevel, a flat spot with these holes. Those holes are not such that you can flip the knife open. It's hard enough with an access lock to flip it open, but I just can't get enough grip there. And it's, you know, rounded and softened. There's no crisp edge for you to get a grip with to uh, open it that way. Of course, you can do a pinch and open it this way. You know, it's something you can do. If you live in a place where you have to have two-handed knives, well, you can just grind off this tab right here, and then it's a two-handed knife. Just don't tell the authorities that you can do this. I know it's not going to catch on this video. I should try to do that in slow motion. Yeah, I'll see if I can do that, and I'll add it right here. It's a well-made knife. It's got good grip. There's texture on this black section as well as on this blue section. It's not just made smooth, so they found a way to, to mill it here so there's still grip there. It looks a bit weird, but it works for me. I thought there'd be a problem right here with this section here being either too big or too small to be comfortable, but I can get my two fingers in there just fine. My hands are just barely into the extra large range. Sometimes I buy gloves that say large on them in North America. Usually they say extra large before they fit well. That's between 9 and 10 in European sizes. So you can grip the knife this way and work for a while. But this long flat section here, you can do a forward grip if you want to as well. Sort of, you know, like there's a forward choil, but obviously it's just flat. But I found it to be comfortable and workable if you really wanted to get more weight pressure from your thumb over the blade up here. So there's a couple grips that way. Reverse grip is comfortable. Even a reverse pull grip is comfortable as well. Um, you know, fist grip, saber grip. It's just a comfortable, nice knife. It's not very heavy. It's got a good look to it. The hardware is my favorite thing. We've got these flush screws here. They are T6, which I'd rather have T8s, but at least they're flush. We've even got flush screws on the pocket clip, and you can get at them from the top. It doesn't even look bad if you take the pocket clip off. And on this side, just like the pivot pin, it's just a nice smooth pin. Beautiful knife. They've done a good job on it. Is it worth the price? Well, you'll have to decide that for yourself. For some people, it's definitely worth the price. Let us now, before we take it apart and do all that stuff, I'm going to go do my size comparison, which I forgot at the beginning. 
and then we'll go over all the sizes and dimensions and things. I like to compare knives to the Ontario Rat 1. So there we go. Line up the pivot pins. The handle is not all that much different in terms of how much grip you have. It is smaller. The blade length, you know, from the pivot pin, it's shorter, but your uh, cutting edge, you know, it's not much less. It's about an eighth of an inch less cutting edge on the San Remu than there is on the Ontario Rat 1. So now, while this is on the screen, I'll be talking sizes, dimensions, and all those kinds of things. D2 usually has a Rockwell around 59.60. San Remu says that that's right where they like to do it as well, so that's good. The weight of this knife, 82 grams, 2.9 ounces. So a full-size knife that's under 3 ounces, very good. The factory sharpness, 95 bess. That's better than average for budget knives, so very well done. The blade length and the cutting edge length are very close to identical, so I'm just going to give the same number. 83.6 millimeters, 3.292 inches, so almost three and a third inches. The blade thickness is 3.03 millimeters, that's 0.1185 of an inch, so a bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, it's widest right here at the heel of the blade, 24.4 millimeters, that's 0.96 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it is 0.48 millimeters, which is 19 thousandths of an inch. The uh, handle length, and I measured it not counting the lanyard. Just, so this area here, I guess I should have done the lanyard, but I didn't. 114.3 millimeters, 4.5 inches. The grip area, and again, because this angle here, it's sort of relative. It's around 10 and a half centimeters. It's a bit over four inches, but not four and a quarter. The handle thickness measured on the G10, you know, the blue to the blue surface right here, 12.5 millimeters, 0.478 of an inch. The handle depth within the grip area, so I'm not counting this part here, but in the grip area, it's biggest right here, 26.7 millimeters, 1.051 inches. Uh, the width of the knife or depth when it's closed, it's largest right up here, 30.7 millimeters, 1.208 inches. And then the total length of the knife is 201.3 millimeters, which is 7.925 inches. So eight inches. Three and a third, four and a bit, those are pretty good proportions. And the balance point is right here. Not bad. Oh, I forgot to do the uh, grind angles. 17.7, .7, and it stayed nice and consistent, but a little steeper on the bellies. So the main cutting area here, so I'm just going to put those numbers down for the grind angles, which is quite good. With this with this D2, I'd probably sharpen it to 18 degrees per side, which is pretty close to what this is at the, at the the uh, from the factory, so not bad. Okay, so there's some very nice screws. There's just a little bit of thread locker on there, but there was no problem to take them apart. The uh, drivers, very snug fit, very tiny bit of play between these screws and my uh, Weeha drivers. That's the closest I can focus. So yeah, the Weeha drivers, T8 and T6, worked very, very well. And let's see how well this will come apart. I don't think I should have to take the uh, pocket clip off, but it is a bit tight there, so I'm going to take the pocket clip off too. Okay, yes, there is that one body pin right there, of course. So there we go. Now that body pin just wants to fall out, but these are D-shaped body pins. There's oil in there, as you can see. And then some grease where the uh, omni pins are, omni screws, omni springs. Boy, oh boy, that would, took me a while, didn't it? But yeah, there's the stop pin right there. And that's how it works. As it's 
going to the lock position, those springs push the pin up, and there it is. And if you, when you pull them back, it undoes the lock from there, and you can do that. Now it's in a spot over here, and the spring's pushing. That's what stops the knife from opening. You can see that moving. I have to get it up and onto this curved end of the blade, and then it slides open. So that's a little bit of how it works, and I'm not going to take it apart any further than that. It's got enough metal to have good structure, and a little enough metal so that it's got light weight. Well, as you can see, I did take it all the way apart. And that's because during edit, I saw that there was a tiny little bit it looked like the spring was cracked. Here's a close-up of what I saw. So, yeah, I took it all apart afterwards, cleaned it off, and there's the chrome coating on that wire that is chipped off. So I don't think the integrity of the spring is compromised, at least not very much. Uh, the coating doesn't really provide an awful lot in terms of strength for the spring, but it means that there's that much less material right there. So I'm going to try to contact SanRamU and see if they can will send me a new set of Omni Springs, hopefully. And now you get to see that, yes, there is the typical uh, washers in here. They've got a phosphor bronze and a Teflon washer, one on each side, which is par for the course for uh, SanRamU, and it's those washers with those little holes in them which make it really great for carrying lube around so yeah i took it all the way apart now so i'll ugh, i'll clean it up completely and uh put it back together off camera i think i'll sharpen it first as well it's so much easier to sharpen a knife when the blade is uh removed at least the folding knife usually <laughs> Now it's time to go over the pros and the cons, my final thoughts, those kinds of things. The blade. I don't mind bead blast. It's a pretty good blade. Functionally, it works quite well. It's thin enough behind the grind. It's a decent slicer and a decent piercer. It doesn't excel at either one of those jobs, but it does a good job of both. Uh, the way the sharpness trail ends here, it's quite good. It's a usable knife, good grip. We've got a very nice lanyard option. I like that. The axis lock, very functional, very usable. There's just a little bit of a ring texture on there just to give it a little bit of grip to pull it back and deploy it. So that's a really good thing. What are the cons? The pocket clip is the main con on this knife uh, from my perspective. One, this anodization, it's already chipped right there and I don't think I've dropped this knife. I'm not sure why it chipped, but there's a tiny little chip on the anodization right there. This blue anodization didn't do well for Ganzo a few years ago, and hopefully Sanremu will learn it soon that it doesn't do well in a lot of cases either. At least their screws are really high quality screws. That's another big plus. I didn't mention the anodization ring on the pivot collars. That's quite nice. It's just a clip. Let's put the uh, knife in and out of a pocket. So here we go. It does want to climb over right away, so that's not a problem. It goes all the way to the bottom, so that's good. And a little bit of knife sticking out, not bad. It doesn't look like you've got, you know, something huge in your pocket. I don't like, yeah, I just don't like the blue that much and the anodization part of it because it chips. I'd rather just have a steel, stainless steel pocket clip. The structure of the clip, I don't mind very much. It's functional. It's a good size. It, you know, it mirrors kind of what's happening on the knife. It's not bad. It's mostly that anodization that I don't like. I didn't mention blade centering. It's just a tiny bit off, but quite good. You can get yours at White Mountain Knives. I don't think I found it on Amazon. Uh, any other places that I find it, I'll leave links down below. If you do shop at White Mountain Knives, please use my coupon code for your benefit 
And for mine, I did get the knife at a small discount. Every small discount adds up and helps out, so I'm very thankful to uh, Justin over at White Mountain Knives for uh, working with reviewers of channels my size, which really, really helps us an awful lot. So thanks for watching my video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.